The management of bladder cancer can actually be quite complex, but this disease state leads to the most opportunities for you to improve your care. My goal here today is to go over the big strokes in bladder cancer and teach you what you need to know so you can make sure you get the best possible care out there. Bladder cancer starts in the lining of the bladder. The cancer then grows, often asymptomatically, into the wall of the bladder. Early signs can blood in the urine, but many times there are no obvious signs. As the cancer grows, it can either grow into the open space in the bladder or into the wall of the bladder. The more the cancer grows into the wall of the bladder, the more dangerous it becomes, as the risk of it spreading goes up. When the bladder cancer is found by a urologist, they will usually do a procedure called a transurethral resection of the bladder tumor to remove it. Once the tumor is removed, it's assessed by a pathologist to see how aggressive it looks. Aggressive cancers can be described as high grade, and non-aggressive cancers are usually described as low grade. The low-grade cancers usually have a very low risk of spreading and killing you, and the high-grade cancers are the ones that we really worry about. For people with low-grade cancer, the name of the game is really whack-a-mole. All you need to do is remove the tumors when they pop up. It's really annoying, but usually as long as the cancer stays low-grade or non-invasive, you are safe. In one study, at three and a half years follow-up, zero people in the low-grade cancer group died, but over 40% of them had their cancer come back at least one time during the study period. This is why checking for recurrence after treatment for low-grade bladder cancer is extremely important. There is something you can do, however, to lower this risk of recurrence. People who have low-grade cancer have been shown in multiple studies to have a lower risk of recurrence if they have chemotherapy put into their bladders immediately after the resection. When you look at the way that we cut up tumors into a bunch of pieces and then wash them out of the bladder, there's no surprise that there's a risk that these cancers can implant in other parts of the bladder. And that's why we put chemotherapy in the bladder after surgery in order to kill the bladder cancer that's floating around within the bladder. Now personally, I think the way that we remove these bladder tumors is actually not that smart. What we're doing is we're cutting the tumor into many pieces and then washing those tumors out. As you can imagine, there's multiple tumors that are flying around throughout the bladder and they have the risk of implanting in other parts of the bladder and essentially spreading the cancer to other parts in the bladder. I've been working on a device to try and solve that for several years and that's still in the research and development phase. But until then, what surgeons have been doing is instilling chemotherapy into the bladder in order to try and kill these free-floating cancer cells. Now for the people with the high-grade bladder cancer, it's a little bit different. For them too, the transurethral resection fails, but there are other things to consider. The reality is that transurethral resection of bladder tumors is actually pretty ineffective at completely removing tumors, so transurethral resection of the bladder tumor is often not a cure for bladder cancer. In fact, one in three people with high-grade disease who undergo a transurethral resection of the bladder tumor are still found to have residual cancer if you go back and then do a re-resection just a few weeks after the first resection. So here's one opportunity for you to actually improve your care. So if you had a TURBT or a transurethral resection of a bladder tumor and the pathology came back as high-grade or that the cancer was invasive in any way, it's really a good opportunity for you to ask for a re-resection because if they re-resect the base of the tumor, there's a one in three chance there actually be more tumor to remove. For the people with high-grade cancer, the goal is to keep the cancer from invading deep into the muscle. Transurethral resection is one step, but we can also give medications inside the bladder like BCG or less effective chemotherapy to try to help the body eliminate the cancer. The treatments like BCG aren't perfect, but they can keep around 50 to 70% of people with high-grade disease from progressing over a five-year period. This is actually pretty good. This is why most people with high-grade disease at least try BCG before considering having their bladders removed. Now, if the pathology comes back that the cancer is not only high-grade, but is invading the lining of the bladder, called the lamina propria, or the muscle itself, the risk of it spreading has gone up and these cancers are becoming more dangerous. The more the cancer invades, the higher the chance that it will spread, and once it spreads, it's usually uncurable, though there are now some rare exceptions. The general rule of thumb is that if the cancer invades muscle, then you should have your bladder removed. In this study, they looked at the risk of cancer coming back after having your bladder removed, stratified by how deep the cancer invaded the bladder wall. As you can see, if you waited until the cancer got deep into the wall of the bladder and invaded the fat or an adjacent organ, the surgery failed to cure these people more than 50% of the time. If the surgery was done when the cancer invaded the muscle at about five years, around 70% of the patients showed no evidence of recurrence. But if the surgery was done before there was invasion into the muscle, then around 90% of patients had no evidence of recurrence at around five years of follow-up. In other words, with bladder cancer, if you have high-grade disease, the earlier you treat it aggressively, the better the chance of cure. Before surgery, there are options to improve these odds even more. 
you can try a course of chemotherapy before surgery, and this is systemic chemotherapy, which can lead to a complete eradication of cancer in up to as many as 40% of patients. The tough part is, though, that there's no reliable way to be sure that the chemotherapy completely cured these patients, so most of these people are still having their bladders removed, except for in some clinical trials. So as you can see, bladder cancer has a wide range, from something that's just a nuisance to something that's potentially life-threatening. And along the way, there are many opportunities for you to seek out better care so that you can try to beat this disease. If there are any questions or things you want to have addressed, please leave a comment and I'll address them in a new video or I'll try to address your comments below. As always, creating these videos takes a lot of effort and a lot of time. If you want to support us, you can go to cancerbetter.com. Thanks for joining us and I'll see you in the next video. Topics discussed in this video are for educational purposes only and should not be used to make medical decisions. Every individual has unique circumstances which will influence their medical care and the application of scientific literature should be interpreted within the context of your general health. Please consult a doctor before making any clinical decisions.